Shall we call the meeting to order? Um, mm -hmm. Just going to put this up. Uh, we need to approve the minutes. Motion approved. Are you moving? Yes. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> second. 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 <laughs> All those in favor? Since we've got um, Liz on, you want to start, Liz? Your minutes. We're approving your minutes. Can you, you tell me? Yeah. Can you tell me who seconded, please? I did. Jan did. Okay, thank you. I, Liz. Okay, Mark. Hi, I'm Mark. Hi, Rani. Hi, Jan. Hi, Michaela. Hi, Patrick. I'd just like to, for the record, say that this is an extraordinarily fine set of minutes, Liz. Thank you. And I know you've been yeah. through uh, <laughs> your own challenges, but that is the very best, best, best summary of everything we talked about with the HHP. Mm -hmm. So... I would, say, I would say it was almost word for word. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was an excellent, excellent document. Thank you. And actually one we'll report to. Uh, okay, I'm going to skip to, since we have Michael and I know you need to, you've got other things, Michael. Could you give us an update, please, on what's happening with the playground and, and I will update on the garden. So the playground, I I asked Cindy Mac to provide us with an update number to include an installation um, instead of a community build. So the total cost right now is forty six thousand. That does not include the demolition, and uh, but it does include the installation and the um, putting down of the mulch. So. Now the next step will be for me to, if the committee wishes to move forward, would be to check with Construct that that is acceptable now that it's not being done with volunteers and then filing an RDA with the Conservation Commission because we have gone from an area of a roughly 1,000 feet to 3,600 feet, um, which includes removal of the grass area, grass on top. And we uh, need about another two thousand dollars to include the demolition of the bill of the existing structure because that was not included in the proposal by uh, Miracle. Right. Why is it we can't do the community build, Michael? Uh, as stated, when we started this project, um, construct stipulation was that it would be a. Uh, be constructed by a certified installer. Um, which is what, what the community build is. They do the installation. They, they, uh, the only thing that happens is that the uh, community people assist, but it's fully supervised. They have, they have insurance or no? Yeah, of course they do. They, they oh. have full, full insurance and they have full insurance for everybody who's on the property while they're there including the community people. But that did not include some of the later work that would have to be done would have not been underneath the community build portion being covered. Yeah, the only thing that wouldn't be covered would be the following week you would, uh, we would need to either hire someone to put the, um, to put the mulch down or, um, uh, we would hire someone for the to do it, and then the person we hire would have their insurance, right? Is, is there an issue with with their whose insurance would be covering? Wouldn't it be the uh, the miracle people? As far as. If we did a community build. Well, for, first right? of all, when you say if a community build, construct rate right from day one was never wanted a community build. This was a uh, stipulation right from the beginning that this would be built by a contractor. So okay. that do was we laid have, out. Do we have, if that was never communicated to us. And when Liz and I met on many occasions with the with the um, the property manager that was never communicated to us. Do we have that in writing? 
We have the original statement that they were going to allow us to install a playground in the place of the existing one. In further conversations with them, that this they would want a certificate of insurance from a certified installer. Then we never, I don't know if you ever during your meetings, because this was taken over by um, a couple individuals who met independently. I don't know if you ever expressed to them that this was going to be a community build, that this but, was going to be used volunteers. When it was but, first brought up, it was said that volunteers would not be something on this project. Uh, Liz, it, Liz and I went to meet with the property manager. Do you recall, Liz, whether that was ever brought up? I don't think it was brought up with us, but I think there have been... Um... I think there's been communication between you and me and the property manager. I think there's been communication between Construct and Michael and other. It's it's not all going to the same place. So there's a lot of information out there that's not all hitting the same people. Okay. So so Michael, you had uh, which I, Liz, were you aware that they were not going to allow the community build? Not till very recently, and I haven't. I have not been. This is my first outing. Yeah, I, I know. I know you've been um, out of I mean, pocket, so to speak. Yes, Patrick. I mean, I, I look at it. If there's a if there's a process that you want concert to go through, you need to write it down and get them to sign off on it, and literally sign off on it. I don't know that the seven of us. We've tried that. But if they are not willing to do that, then I don't know what to say. They other don't than, even respond. I mean, do yeah. we really want to go forward because the communication has been so? We don't really know, uh, in a, we really don't seem to know. Michael seems to have one set of information and Liz and I have a, a different set. Well, so, we've, never, we've, never had a, we've never had a final, yes, you can do this. We've never had that. Um, only, we, only verbally from-, from no, uh, it, was, it was at the very, very beginning. And then the second meeting was, we just wanted where the, where the um, playground is now. So okay. we don't even know if they've approved it, Michael. Do they, they've been given the plans, but um, that's why I brought this. So that it's really clear. It's a large, much larger section and it's not at all in the place where the old playground is currently. So what was said and what was communicated between Construct, this board and the rest, I don't know. I know that this process originally started with $40,000 at that time, I had offered to take the lead on it, bring O'Brien's in. They were going to do a design, deconstruction, and installation for 40000 within the parameters that were set by construct. At that time, it was determined that the Affordable Housing Trust took over and moved toward a community build, which then would take a different direction. So... That's where we're at now, as far as what was offered, what was communicated, and the rest. I'm not even 100% sure of what was exactly communicated between the parties. Yeah. It's changed every time. <laughs> right. We haven't been, we've written to them. Uh, Liz has written to them, and I've written to them, and um, they have not uh, responded to either one of us. So, which, which tells us that right now they're on, they're, that's a no. Right. So, so, I mean, should we just not go forward? Well, it feels like there's been a lot of time invested in this and it would be great for the community there and the children there. I feel like maybe before, before you decide to scrap it, just to try one more time to have one maybe in-person meeting with them to see what can be solidified, if anything, and then Michael, would you be willing to call that meeting and get, uh, I assume June is the proper person? Is that who you've been dealing with, June or Jane? Uh, June and Kathy Wiggins. Okay, so both you've talked to both of them. Yes. Do you think uh, there could be a meeting with you and them and Liz and myself? Um, I think it can be set up. Are we walking in to tell them this is what they have to agree to, or we're pulling the plug, or are we saying, how are we approaching this? That, that's been a little bit of the confusion that has happened um, because we didn't go for a design, demolition, and installation. 
around the money that was allocated. We've shifted into different ways of doing it, different ideas, different designs. Um, so we have to, I think the three of us, maybe me, you, and Liz need to get together and figure out exactly what are we proposing to construct uh, because like I said, it was originally a design design demolition installation. They were going to come up with three different designs that we were going to take to the tenants, allow the tenants to select one of the designs and also construct be involved and then have it uh, demolition happen and installation happen. But then that changed. So well, we need to be very it, clear about what we are Michael, can you see the board that's up here? This no, this plan, no. okay, but this plan has been presented to Kathy Wiggins. It's been sent to June. Uh, Construct is very much aware of this of this plan, which hasn't really changed since. Uh, what would you say uh, last fall, Liz? I'm sorry, I'm <laughs> writing notes at the same time. Okay, uh, sorry, but uh, so Liz and I have sort of taken on this as our project. And in the meetings, we have shown this aerial and this design, uh, and that's been sent to June. So they are very much aware of this plan. I don't know anything about, Liz and I were not involved at all in anything to do with uh, that other company. So I think that uh, if, if we are, um, if we are interested in going forward, still going forward, um, we should try to have a meeting, wouldn't you say? And see if there is. I don't, I don't look at it. my personal opinion is the start is a ten thousand dollar request, which we did. Yep. The select board added thirty thousand, which we did. Yep. I think that this. I, I see it as two choices at this point. We're trying to finish up the housing production plan. We're already in March. That means next month we're supposed to get a report on what these people all want to talk about, right. which is are we going to be able to build something here? And I think we got to move on to the bigger fish than the never ending playground. I think if you got 40 grand, come up with a playground that for 40 grand all in, the construct can live with, not a negotiation, not like anything a dollar more than 40 grand, because that's what we have available and just basically get it ordered. And if we can't get it ordered, we'll put the money towards something that we're allowed to put it toward, you know, at, at, at construct or elsewhere to support housing. I, 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 I don't understand why this has gotten so Neither do we. Yes, I know we don't. So, you know, scale it back and do forty thousand dollar project. Or we'll pull the plug on it. I don't care. But we got to get to the more important things of building housing. I completely agree. So, okay. um, would so, someone like so to make Michael, a motion? What's, what's, what's the best way to do that? Would it just be to have a meeting? Would it just be for a meet, Michael and you and them to have a meeting to say that? If, if they would come, they seem to not be responsive at all. Well, let's not. We, we, we haven't offered them a meeting in this in this kind of. It's just it's an answer. We just need an answer. And we haven't offered them a meeting around the around. Um, the design, demolition, installation, um, all inclusive. We've come up with ulterior alternatives for them to consider all along the way. I well. I guess there, there's a real source of confusion because there's only been one plan since Liz and I've been involved. Uh, so that's fine. We're, we find ourselves in that position. I okay. Mean, so, uh, Michael, you, uh, can you organize a meeting or uh, or do we want to vote to uh, withdraw? We have a plan to do the 40000 We all We have in. a plan to do a community build for the $40,000 uh -huh. for that plan right there. But it's my, my understanding that they won't do the community build unless we change their mind. So do we have a, Michael, do we have a plan for a $40,000 playground, including the demolition and all the rest of the costs? No. No, that is what I stated. The original, and it wasn't a design, the original process I laid out was that we would have a contract, we would have a company such as Miracle or O'Brien's come in and design our, a around that location have demolition installation included and a not to exceed price of 40,000, have them come up with three different designs that we would take. I presented that to the board. At that time, the board said to proceed with that. And then it became this other alternative, which- Do we still have those quotes? 
Do we still have those three quotes? No, we never did the three designs because it was there were other ideas put forward by individuals of what they wanted to do with this project. No, what what right. well to, to be specific, we got a quote from Miracle for forty thousand dollars to do everything except it's a community build. So if if either we have one more meeting and see if the construct will attend and we can put it on the table. And if they say no, then we can move on. Okay, yeah, that sounds good. Great. Okay, so Michael, it looks like it's in your court. Okay. To set up the meeting. And yep. if uh, Liz and I, uh, well, Liz, you know, how soon will you be able to attend? <laughs> Good question. Um, I can always attend online. Okay. All right. So Liz may have to attend online. Thank you, Michael. Yes. yes. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Hey. I, I don't think, uh, I know you have other things to do. So hey. thank you for coming. Um, no problem. Okay. Our very favorite subject, Jan. Uh, the housing production plan. So a couple of things that we wanted to talk about today was the next steps in this whole process. And those are really three. Um, the first one is we want to have another community housing workshop or, or meeting where we would uh, describe the housing production plan itself, have a discussion with the community about that plan get feedback, um, possibly modify the plan after the, we get the feedback um, and move forward. So one of the things uh, that I was hoping we might do today would be to look at the calendar for the rest of March and April and maybe select one or two dates that would be possibilities so that we could move forward because we'll have to get notices sent out mm -hmm. um, and so on about that meeting. And I, I will just mention that for each of the um, trust members today, I sent out Karen's uh, first draft of the presentation materials for that community housing meeting. Um, I encourage all of you to look through those if you have comments, suggestions, changes you think we should make, that you get back to Karen and me about about that uh, okay. pretty much in the next in the next week or two so that we can be editing those being getting ready for the meeting. So let's first um, look at a couple of dates, if you could, that um, might be possibilities. I was thinking one might be three weeks from today, which would be Monday, the 25th of March. It's the day after Palm Sunday, just so you're aware. <laughs> of I'm not available. You're not available, Karen. I have a conflict. I have a meeting. Okay. So uh, possibly the 28th, which is a Thursday. Okay. Would that be possible? What are you, uh, is it going to be a meeting like we had before? Yes. And in the hopes to break down into two small groups again no. and just... Well, I, no, I don't think no. so. Karen, maybe you want to Karen, go Karen. through what the process is normally. Um, yeah, in, typically at this stage, we would present the key takeaways from the housing production plan and then open it up for comments, questions, that type of thing. We had the small group discussions initially in the first workshop because we really wanted input into um particular goals and and strategies for inclusion in the sections that we just recently have been uh revising and drafting so i i, I haven't been to any work any meetings at this stage in the planning process that involved small group discussions okay six o'clock or when do you think I don't know, six o'clock, uh, Karen, is that? I think it's six o'clock on the 28th. Okay. Can yeah. everyone do that? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, you would present it and then we would ask for feedback? Yes. I mean, it's it's long. Um, how, how are we going to get it out to 
people or well, how how well, can people be prepared? Well, there are two ways. One, uh, at the beginning of the meeting, we're going to go through the presentation that Karen has okay. put together, and which we'll probably edit between now and then. Um, but also, we've already posted, on, well, along with the agenda for this meeting, a draft of the housing production plan, which, as you point out, is 100 pages long. So, yeah. you know, any, anybody could read through that and get uh, their comments or suggestions or questions can when you generate, are you able to generate a PDF from that doc file? Yeah. Because uh, when I try to, it it corrupts the first 15 pages and starts on like page 16. I have not been able to save a PDF, and I don't think it's smart to post a doc file that can be edited. I mean. Oh, you yeah. You want to post a PDF. And I've been sending both Word and PDF versions. Okay. So we'll make sure we get the Yeah, but I can't. For, I, I mean, I have... Acrobat Professional, I cannot save that file into a PDF. It will not save without truncating the first 16 pages. So make sure you check the PDF. If you have a full one, can we post that? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And I would also say there's one other issue on the housing production plan that's uh, posted. And uh, Karen, you can jump in if you want to. But when you look at the number, and I think it's around page 20, 18 or 20, when we're talking about the housing profile, for the town. In the 2020 census, there were 1,638 housing units in town. About half of those were for full time. But uh, this past June, the state issued an update to, those inf to that information, which now says, according to the state, that we have 1,079 uh, full time housing units in town. And that's important primarily because when we're looking at the housing production plan, we want to be identifying um, how our 113 units compare to the full-time housing units in town. And under the earlier number, it was about 13%. Under this new number, it's, oh, no, over 10. Uh, it's just over 10%. So, uh, and this number being that much higher than the number two years ago, according to what you mentioned to me, Karen, was that's not only happened in Stockbridge, but there are a few other t towns, mostly out Huge on the- Huge issue for any community that has had a, has a sizable seasonal or second home uh, inventory. Uh, it's been big on the Cape. Martha's uh -oh. figure is huge. Um, what you know, we're seeing is in the 2020 figure that DHCD now EO HLC gave us um, does, is important because of what Jan said. It is the denominator for the 10% um, affordability percentage. But if you look at the 2021 information or even 2022, the, the figure has gone down. So there was this surge over COVID that might have been captured. It seems yeah. like an overkill on right. how it's been captured, but it's it's back down. Mm -hmm. So okay. I, I think we we need to focus in reality on the after 2020 figure that uh, but it is still going to be a lingering issue until the 2030 census is released for yeah. the percentage of affordability. Okay. And mm -hmm. So one of the things that we may be doing is is editing the housing production plan okay. to to make this a little clearer because it's I think it's a little confusing right now in that write up. Mm -hmm. um, I so. don't think we should dwell on it too much to tell you the truth because it can be confusing. You know the 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 ten seventy nine figure is basically important because of the SHI. Right. Okay. Otherwise. Well, you know, the the number in 21, 2021 that we have is much more reality-based. So yeah. in some cases, I have ignored that 1079 number because I think it does confuse things. And it's so much higher than reality yeah. um, that, um, I mean, we can talk about how, you know, your ideas about making it simpler, but I think we shouldn't emphasize that number. Okay. But we don't, no matter what, even with these different numbers, 
we still have our status as being yes. over 10 percent yes yes it, it, uh, isn't there an up i mean there is an update and nobody this number is not changed each year <laughs> because there there is a isn't there an update every year like you have 21 numbers and 22 numbers and 23 numbers not from the state yeah not from the not state. for the shr that percentage stays the same it's a based on the decennial information and yeah. um yeah so we went up in during covid yeah you know, just some quick math or just this for you um if you take out the 113 units or that are affordable that brings it down to 960 we have a, I don't know, Karen, what do we have? 50 or 100 rental units in town? What's the total rental units? N number of rental not, units? Not affordable rental, just rental units, yeah. <laughs> Off the top well, of my All right, well, fine. I think it's some, even if it's just as it's, low as 50, it's I think it's 77 higher. 77 are rental. Yeah, it's think. not very, there's not, it's not the a 100. very high number. Yeah, okay. 277. Yeah. And then and that 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 puts us as, for home ownership in the, you know, uh, uh, high six hundreds, and I and we, you know, we did, and this is my punchline. Um, we did hire Granicus to start to track short term rentals, and the February numbers. I just saw the snapshot, and it's something like one hundred and sixteen units on the market in February in Stockbridge. So uh, that that number tends to go up in the summer because sometimes people will do a trade or go to Europe and then rent their house out, but. You know, um, that's a pretty good indication of, you know, so in terms of home ownership anyway, it's probably something like one out of every six or seven. And that's the number we're going to want to keep uh, an, an eye on. I do think from all indications in conversations I've had with folks at the state level, it looks like the ADU for all bylaw is going to pass. Yeah. Um, that actually may reduce the pressure on sort of, um, you know, uh, uh, buy an entire property for homes because if you know if more of us can put an ADU in by right maybe that becomes the the short term rental rather than you know than the primary house who knows but uh, but I think that we've got a lot of you know moving parts here but right now there's basically I don't know one out of every six or seven five mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. uh, okay all right, so come back to our, we have a date set tentatively. For, Wait, Jackie, yeah. Sorry. Thank you, Randy. Randy answered my question, which was, this town is still uh, in good standing with respect yeah. to yes. its uh, meeting the affordability mm -hmm. um, uh, results mm -hmm. as evidenced by the state. My question was, uh, you know, I have neighbors here who haven't you know, been to the meeting before. Um, with respect to the pub, to this hearing associated with this committee's uh, review of the housing production plan, uh, will there? How will you coordinate with the other committees that you've previously stated will also be reviewing? So that was going to be. That's a very good question. Thank you. <laughs> that segues right into what I was going to say next. <laughs> Here comes the answer. <laughs> so after we have the community uh, housing a meeting that we just set up, then we will set up times to go and meet probably first with the planning board and present the housing production plan mm -hmm. to the planning board and get their feedback and input. Uh, and then to the select board and uh, meet with them. And in some communities, they do that jointly, but I think it really depends on the planning board and the select board here, whether we do it together or individually. Um, and then that after that, those two meetings, we would then, we may have further modifications to the housing production plan based on those meetings. Um, and then we would have a final discussion here in this group. And then I think it, we would finalize it, right, Karen? Well, the... Are there other steps that we've... The planning board and select board, those approvals, in, once they approve the plan, uh, you don't want to make too many changes after that because yeah, no. that's pretty final. Then after that, we submit it to the state. Okay, then. Yeah. I was just saying that if there were if those boards suggested changes, we'd want to make those make sure they were all on board on, right. on those 
And their approvals would probably be, we approve the plan based on these changes. Right. And we right. would make those and then submit it to the state. Yeah. Okay. I would, I would suggest that a third board we have to talk to because it's relevant to the plan which we have with the donated property is the Water and Sewer Commission. Sewer, is it sewer water or water and sewer? I never get it right. Um, it, it all depends on the day. Because we got to know the diameter of the pipes, the capacity. There's a lot of questions about what is realistic up there. We have no idea. And my suggestion is that we absolutely add water yeah. and sewer to the list of folks we need to have a conversation and partnership with to make sure that the plan that we have is based on reality of what the, the infrastructure will support, or we have a whole different issue, which is, a you know, it, which might be well over a million dollars or more in, in infrastructure improvements based on the line. So I think we got to have a conversation with our board. I that, yeah. We have not even included in the plan any specific properties. Oh, we haven't? No, no. we haven't. No. Oh. We haven't. No, no, there's there not, there's, no list of particular no. properties in the production goal or it's, the strategy. It's, it's, but on page like so 70 or 80, we... It would be overkill to talk to the water and sewer in the absence of a particular, you know, site. But it's just... When you do your due diligence on um, right. that property, that's another thing, but not in connection to the plan. But but right. Karen, it, there there is um, yeah. what, five... If that's what you're referring to, well, we have, we have the, the plan has these goals in it. Yeah, that's right. Of, right. I know. Five, five, but we haven't, we haven't, five, but, but we haven't yeah. embedded it into any particular project except for heat and court, the extension of heat, heat and court. Otherwise, there's no, we have, you know, that's, five units. We don't even or, know, if we can you know, one. this yeah, or right. that, but there, it's not a particular, it's not, not site identified at this point. We can add it right. if you guys want to. Well, but but we don't know. We don't even know yet what the findings are from right. the study that's underway at the moment. Right. So we don't right. know whether right. you could even build there uh, with or without the sewer. And water. But as it but as it relates to the the housing production plan, would never would never include. I think Karen, any specific one. It's just in general. No. Am I wrong about right. that? I mean, typically in plans, we identify particular properties. In this case, we have not identified particular properties except for heat and court. All right. But we're clearly, it's already middle of March. So speaking of March, all right, we're going to have by around April 1st, a report on this property. All right. We're going to have a pretty good indication of whether or not it's buildable. And I would suggest that by the time the planning board and the select board review everything, not only do we possibly have an opportunity to see if it's buildable, but over the next two months, we may also have an opportunity to see what the infrastructure, infrastructure can support. And then we could get more specific in the final version of the plan based on those two pieces of input data. Yeah. I'm just saying we don't have to get specific, but why shouldn't we? You so know, I think it's up to you. So I, I think I think what we might do is let's go ahead and present it to the uh, water and sewer, right? <laughs> water and sewer today. Um, yeah. Uh, as inf and as informational mm -hmm. and without identifying specific properties, but everyone will be aware that may be one that is in here, but the other units that we're talking about in the plan may actually be somewhere else where we have not identified it yet. But I think it's still valuable for the water and sewer group to know what, right. you know, that that this is coming down the road. Right. And Well, I think we know that it's coming down the road because it's, it, it's, it's a public uh, uh, presentation, if you will. Mm -hmm. However, we won't be able to give you any answers at all until we hear from the engineers right. yes, what right. they proposed. Right. I mean, we have a low pressure three inch sewer line up there and we have a six inch water line, right. but it's not, as we all know, uh, fire protection. Right. It is. It but, and it could be, it could be done that we simply can't rely on, let's say you could do maybe some water, but not sewer or the other one. And so it could be, Three units or five units or six units with wells, or knows? I yeah, there's yeah, so it's a bigger have, property that we could more. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's more basically, you know, I think that uh, that and but 
it, we're a long, long way from having any information that's useful to you. Mm -hmm. um, even after we get the engineering information, you know, there's planning, there's, you know, there's a lot that goes, a lot that goes in, plus the community conversation, and that gets changed. Are you talking about the housing production plan now or that? No, I'm talking about that. Not the, yeah. the housing production plan is in general, as, as I understood it from you, Karen, mm -hmm. that what we're trying to do is tell the state that we're out here, we're alive, we know we need to do some work, and we have set up some goals. And I think they're basically five units a year is the target. Whether we'll meet those or not is a, um, and we don't, we don't need to meet the law to build anything, but we have a will to, wouldn't you say, Patrick, to, yeah, yeah. to, to, um, to improve our housing situation. And that's, that's what the housing production plan is about. And you can really get the, the development of anything is going to be complicated and a lot of public conversation mm -hmm. and a, a lot of different, I, I suspect that we will have seven different opinions about what to do, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, not to mention who are all the community people who will also have opinions about what to do. Mm -hmm. And I think it's more important to get this plan in general discussed and approved and submitted to the state. Okay, I agree. So, so we have our community date set up. Um, I know that if we could get both the planning board and the select board to review this in April mm -hmm. so that by the end of April, we have a pretty good idea of where things stand, that would be optimal. And so I know the planning board meets the second and fourth. First and third. First and third Tuesdays, Tuesdays. of the month. So we're, we're the first and third Thursday. First and third Thursday. Right. But I would stay away from, like, I, I try to do it in April because May gets between yeah. the select board right. gets crazy with the budgets and, you know, just like going into town meeting, mm -hmm. you know. So I would say it's it's early, early to mid April or, you know, the end of May. Okay. So um, maybe, Liz, if you could suggest one of those two meetings in April for us to come to the planning board for a presentation, that would be super. Sure. Uh, and then, um, Patrick, if you could suggest one of those. When is our community convening going to be? It's going to be Monday the... No, it's going to be Thursday, the 28th of March. Can we do it a week later, the, the um, 4th of April? No. Well, we could. I was thinking we'd probably do the planning board before the select board, but. Oh, well, how about do the planning board idea. in the second? Could you do the planning board in the second? Because I'm just saying that, yeah. that that last meeting, select board meeting in April, is when we close the warrant and go through the final budget. And it's just, it's a know, mess. we want to kind of just not be Separate distracted. That, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So let's tentatively say then we do April 2nd for the planning board. And April fourth for the. I mean, but does that give you enough time with the Thursday to Tuesday to make any edits or suggestions based on the community input? It's only five days. Karen, what do you think? <laughs> you know, I can't guarantee that's going to happen. You know, I, I, usually there aren't so many changes, so it's man. Yeah, that's what I figured. Um. So, um. But. Having, you know, Thursday and then Tuesday. Um, and isn't that, oh, no, that's not Thursday. Um, it's Easter. I'll make it, I'll Easter make it. Uh, March 31st. You can always like postpone them. Yeah, that's the thing. You yeah, can, yeah. Postpone so, them. Change right. it. so Karen, let's tentatively do that. And if we need to postpone them to the, yes. uh, couple weeks the third week. Yeah. We'll try. I'm just saying it could be try. a harder meeting to pull up. It'll be hard. I, it doesn't sound realistic that, that you, we'd have your attention at if, that if we do meeting. at that later meeting. I think you warned us. I mean, look, at the war will be closed by late April. We could always push for the first week in May if you want, because that's actually not a very busy meeting because it's, uh, yeah, the war is already closed. 
you know, it has to get printed and all that stuff, whatever they, whatever that means. Well, let's let's tentatively say that first week in April, and if we get to the point where we aren't going to be ready for that, then we'll postpone it to the first week in May. Okay. What is that? And when did you schedule the select board meeting for the fourth? Then. Yeah. Tentatively, yes. Okay. Can you and do that? Yeah. And tell me again, you want me to do the planning board on the second? If we can, yes. Okay, getting on our, we haven't had a lot of meetings lately because we're not voting. We can't meet tomorrow because of the vote. We've got a bid on, so it, it's going to be, it's going to be close. We'll see. Um, okay. And do you have, Liz, does the planning board have the same third uh, Tuesday of the month heavy schedule that the select board would have? It depends on the week. <laughs> we haven't nope. met in a while. We do have some big things coming up, but I uh, don't know where we are at this point. Um, All right. Well, let's 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 pencil in the second and the fourth, and if we need to change it, we will we'll postpone it. Yeah, we'll do it the first week in May. Right. Okay. Can I yes. recommend? And I don't know if this is just your process, but um, in order to encourage more input by the community. Um, you can post written comments or welcome in case people can't come right. to the meeting at six o'clock. It's a good idea. Or busy or otherwise occupied. Uh, and the other thing, I think we talked about this the last time was to the extent that the plan, it was a policy document, but to the extent that the plan can incorporate visuals mm -hmm. that really help us all to see uh, the direction you know, of the town. Um, the um, the presentation includes lots of uh, model visuals, and um, so post be posted or I mean the, the committee the the trust hasn't even had a chance to look at it. Right, it came out today. Right. Yeah, it went out today for so, the for the trust to review it and get comments back. Oh, okay, We're then so going to edit it, and hopefully those will incorporate. Yeah. Yes. You're going to see it right now if you want. We're going to we're go through it. So, no, know, we weren't going to no. do it today, but I, I mean, no. It, 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 it ha it'll, have, it'll have visuals uh, attached to it once it's distributed. That would be really helpful. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Because sometimes you and, know, and, and, which is... Oh, yeah. I think what we'll yeah. try to do is... Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah, I think we'll try to post it before the meeting so that if someone cannot come, they can also see it. When are we going to meet and go over it? Is there a plan that we're going to meet to go over this presentation? I didn't think so. Okay, we're just going to but review it and, and send get you comments. comments to Karen and to me. And, and, and also think about how you want it to be presented. I mean, I'm always comfortable doing the whole thing, but if you want to split it up again, how you want to handle it, um, you know, just uh, be, think, be cognizant of that question when you're going through the draft. Yeah. Okay. How, how many right. how many slides are there, Karen? I haven't seen it, so I you know um, I, 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 I'm I don't remember the particular number. Most of the I'd say at least half, if not more, of the slides are at photos, twenty six information on projects that seem to kind of be kind of a reasonable models for consideration and adaption. I, yeah. Okay. All of that recognizing that we're not recommending any specific one. No, in there. no, no. Just kind of ideas of you know a range of housing types and what's been yep. done in other communities. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think that anyone okay. else have any questions so, or just to be clear, uh, the twenty eighth. Yes. At six p.m. It'll be in this room or in. We need a room, uh, right? We'll need a room. So no, it won't be in this room. It'll be won't didn't we use a larger room last time or did we do it in here? We, we did, did the no, other we did. room. Yeah, we did. We the, did the other room. Yeah. And then we went into the gym. So but we're not gonna do yeah, that. I think the cleaning room is a little bigger. Well maybe not. Um, okay, so it'll be one of these two rooms on the twenty eighth, and then we're going to planning hopefully on the second and to uh, select board on the fourth. On the fourth. And that means all of us are on whoever can come. Okay. Yes. So we should let, if you can't, if you aren't available to come on the second and fourth, could we, could you let us know? Yes. Yeah. 
Okay. Um, All righty. Karen, Karen, is that everything you need? Thank you very much, Karen. Thank you very thank, much. Thank you, Karen, always. Thank you very right. much. Bye now. Okay. Bye -bye. Um, next on the agenda is an update on the vegetable garden project at Pine Woods. Um, we had, or I had asked uh, the Berkshire Botanical Garden to um, be the financial sponsor or the financial contact, which they did. And a, um, a submission was made um, to the Fitzpatrick Foundation and um, they responded, it was a preliminary uh, submission and they responded um, that they did not ask us to uh, send a second level request because Construct had told them this is a project they were not aware of. So Fitzpatrick said since they were not aware of it, um, they um, said they would not consider it. So the vegetable garden project, um, I think, is not going forward. Um, the CDC, Patrick. Okay. Um, uh, so it's, I believe that the end of the, the final number for, uh, for the housing trust was 32,000, um, which is, a uh, uh, a nice, uh, nice amount. Uh, we, we talked about the idea of, uh, we had been approached a couple of years back by a gentleman who, before we had the trust, who wanted to basically sell his house at half price. He grew up in Stockbridge. He had been able to raise his family here and he wanted another family to be able to take his house. And it was valued at around eight and he was willing to sell for four. And unfortunately, we'd have a trust set up. To do that, it would have to go on the affordable rolls. But that just means that somebody, you know, who was making less than 100 grand a year would be able to buy it. And, you know, and uh, and so the idea that, that we talked about at the CPC was the degree we get other offers like that it'd be nice to be able to provide the down payment assistance or something like that. You know, it maybe happens once a decade. I don't know. So anyway, we got, uh, I think it's around 30 grand for that. Um, Construct had asked for three projects, 459,000 for boilers, and then some money for deck repair because they had that deck that collapsed. I don't know if you remember that. And, uh, and uh, some money for siding, I believe it was. And the lawyer, our town council uh, basically indicated there's very tight rules with CPC about what can what money can be used for and boiler replacement is considered maintenance. And so CPC money cannot be used for boiler replacement. That also means because we were funded by CPC that housing trust money cannot be funded, cannot be used to fund boilers. Well, the unfortunate situation with that is that, you know, if a boiler goes on the window and there are several years, seven or eight years past their life expectancy according to construct, you know, that uh, people get really cold. So you know, this is an example of where, you know, non-CPC revenue sources would be helpful. And hopefully, you know, we'll have some of those sources. You know, we've talked about those before. But the the, the CPC did um, uh, fully fund the, the deck repair and that third project, which I think had to do with siding or something, right? It was gutters. Were, gutters. Oh, gutters. Gutters, yeah. So we fully fund, even though we were only funding 50% of other types of projects, we did fully fund those two projects, which were about 130,000, I think, Liz. Wow. And yeah, I, it doesn't matter. We, we funded those two to free up some construct money for the boilers. Frankly, my big concern with construct is it's the middle of winter and a boiler goes out and, you know, people can't, can't live without heat. So you know, we, we don't have a solution. I think they have a fund. They have a, a a fund that they can go to for boilers. Yeah, they don't. The 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 um most of the funds come from grants and other sources, and they get, you know, for example, you know, you brought up the Fitzpatrick Trust. The Fitzpatrick Trust gave them one hundred fifty thousand dollars to build new housing in Sheffield. They didn't give them one hundred fifty thousand, and nobody does this. It's not a criticism of the Fitzpatrick Trust. You know. All everybody likes the sexy. Let's build something new, and nobody—not the state, not anybody—nobody mm -hmm. likes to fund. The, we got to maintain Amazing. the stuff we have. Yeah. The tax credits have run it's out crazy. there because it was all tax credit finance, 
and there ain't no new tax credits available or they're highly competitive for you know maintenance it's much harder to get maintenance money and it's an ongoing problem and uh and uh, i think it's a problem that we you know we we may be able to help with in the future if we if something like you know elmcourt or some other mm -hmm. you know a developer comes forward and wants to build housing but you know not to belabor the point the the we did fund also uh, a relatively small request from the chimney at Riverbrook, and we funded a relatively small request uh, related to uh, uh, some some uh, some work at Heaton Court because Riverbrook and Heaton Court, neither of which were built with CPC money, were relatively limited what we can spend town money on. CPC money was used to build Pinewood, so we have a little more flexibility, but we still weren't able to do the boilers. So that's basically it. Thank you. We have, and we're very fortunate to have two representatives from the trust on the CPC. So um, terrific. Um, I think I have a little report of some things that have been going on that may be. First of all, um, there is a meeting tomorrow that um, Shelly um, Rowling is having on uh, on Zoom if you possibly are free, it's from 12 to one. And it is about, it's a listening, she calls it a listening tour. So she's looking to hear from uh, the localities. So it'll be, I guess, a great big Zoom meeting. Uh, and she's looking for, she's the key person um, who knows all about the money, where the money is, is for housing. So we clearly, uh, and it's a Zoom meeting in Western Massachusetts, or is it in person too? No, it's it's not. Um, it's definitely not in person. Okay. I'm pretty sure. No, it's. Um, but it's focused on Western Mass. Yeah, it's saying. focused on Western Mass, but it's um, join if you can. Um, mm -hmm. Great. I don't know. Can you can you could you look up since you have your computer mm -hmm. on? And there see if there's any tomorrow. information about yeah. meeting in, 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 because I thought it was totally Zoom. It looks like it is, but. Yeah, it does look like it's all Zoom. Right. But, uh, you know, I was, I was uh, wrong the other day about it. Um, so if you can, um, and Liz, I will send it to you and Bruce. Um, and then just a quick update or some of the meetings that I've been having to try to get up to speed and learn as much as we can uh, and keep up to date on what's, what's happening in our area. Uh, Hans had recommended that we get, be in touch with a man named Blair Benjamin. I don't know, many of you may know him. Uh, he's a mass mocha. He's in charge of the artist residency program there. And he's very interested in being at least in touch with you. And Mark was able to come and, I don't know, Mark, if you want to mm -hmm. talk about what we talked about. Well, and it, they have a very impressive uh, artist in residence program at Mass Mocha. Uh, they get artists of, from different, different fields who um, reside there for maybe a month at a time, something like that. Um, and it's a great you know, cross-pollinization of those artists that give them workspace as well as housing. And um, I think the public can interact with those people at times. And it's been going on for a number of years and seems to have been a very successful program. Did we do that in the 60s and 70s? Who was that artist? Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Patrick. <laughs> um, the reason that... Um, Hans thought we might it might be useful to talk to him to Blair because he is he has a statewide position and he goes around to actually all of, I believe all the towns around and he's responsible for trying to um, drum up more artist housing and so he was interested in um, Blair was interested in and when he saw the article about the gift he wrote to Hans and Hans asked us to come and see him. And it was very interesting whether whether what we have and whether we could, uh, whether we would decide to dedicate any of the housing to uh, artists would be obviously something to, to think about. But he's a really terrific guy and he's been at Mass Mocha a long time. Art Spring money. 
Yeah, it's true. But they tend to bring be seasonal. things to. Yeah, I think up there they're mostly seasonal residents, right? For well, that program is one month. Okay. They it's select like resident. They select people. right. Like it has nothing. Apply. The idea was not that any of the people that because they bring them. It's from, rotating. Yes, it's yeah. rotating, and it's from all over the world. Right. I mean, it, it right, uh, and it's everybody. <laughs> the idea was that there are a lot of artists here that right. need housing, um, and so that perhaps some of, of what we do could be dedicated to housing, which was the purpose of the meeting. And he's very knowledgeable. And when we get to thinking about those questions, mm -hmm. um, he's an interesting person. Then we also, um, as a result, Patrick, this is your, your man, George. Oh, Papa. Yeah. yeah. Con tar rude dis yeah that's a that's a it's a Wendy greek Strothman son in law yeah um it's a greek, yeah he's a it's a greek name but his mother-in-law right is lives on church street Wendy Strothman, yeah and um anyway he's a passive art architect and he has formed a firm in in brooklyn to um, concentrate specifically on affordable housing and making it passive yeah and so that was a very interesting contact. And he came over and visited with my husband and myself uh, for about three hours. So uh, what does that mean? Affordable housing that's passive? It's uh, zero, zero, zero energy. Energy. Oh, oh, oh. So basically, it's like it's like living in a, you know, a. It's like you don't have to turn the heat on <laughs> you know? or air conditioning because it always stays <laughs> temperature wise. 12 layers of insulation. And, you know. Oh, it's all um, all kinds of uh, all kinds of ways, different, yeah. you know, double uh, mm -hmm. double framing, different insulation, different triple glazed yeah. windows. It's a specific. Huh? It's super amazing. I just had a friend build one. It's, a, it's yeah. amazing. Yeah, there, there's a whole, it's a whole industry now. But the, for that to be affordable, as the focus is huge, because of passive course, houses are not usually yeah. affordable. Yeah, yeah but it, it, his idea is, okay. the, it's great. Is if we're, we're going to build six of them, you prefab the panels right. of walls, and you kind of, right. you know, leg yeah. them together. Yeah. And, you know, I think the only way oh. we're going to pull this off is probably with some kind of modular solution mm -hmm. like that, where it would be... You know, a couple of little ones and a couple of big ones, and you know, it's got to be. So th this is just some information that he sent yeah. about his firm, and he's he's Greek, and he also has an office in Athens, and he's trying to do affordable housing in Athens as well as wow. New York yeah. City. <laughs> yeah, I have to say, I, I I met with this guy because his mom lives on Church Street, and you know how his moms are; they're like or his mother-in-law, and she's like. You gotta meet my son-in-law. He's an architect, and I have to say, he was actually really a quite impressive guy who knows a lot about both of the intersection of affordable housing and yeah, you know, how do you build them? Because you know, even though it might cost a little bit more, if you can eliminate people's heating bill, oh my God, you know, it makes it more totally affordable. You know, every 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 month. But the guy, it was kind of hilarious. Uh, you know, I, I was. Anyway, he, surprised. he is. Both, uh, my husband and I thought he was very knowledgeable and very interesting. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was very premature, but um, it was interesting to us um, to hear. And and there is this passive architecture group now, and he he's actually certified as a passive architect or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so so it's it and it, it's it's terrific. It's where we're going, where we have to go, and hopefully we are able to do this project, it will be a very heavily passive house. In addition, in a chance to meet with Jackie and- um, the, My, I Rosie Shire, um, long time life resident, uh, long time life resident, 75 years of Stockbridge and uh, mm -hmm. my husband. I was a librarian oh. for 40 years. Ter oh, so, wow. Terrific. Well, we're so, well, great interest to us in great in our, not in our backyard, it's in your backyard, it's across the street, but um, it's a change. Good. Well, we're delighted so you guys are working so hard. Come, come back often. Yes. And uh, I, this is our first time we've been able to attend. So, so terrific, terrific. So, you live on um, Glendale Little Road, right across from Jackie and Nikki. Ah, oh, terrific. Well, Jackie and Nikki came over and we had a wonderful tea party and we got to know them and talk to them about some of their concerns. And uh, Mark was there also. Um, so thank you for coming. And um, hopefully we'll have other opportunities to uh, get to know you better. 
Um, and then just this uh, last week, I had a meeting with Mary Beth Mitz, who's chair of the Lennox Affordable Housing Trust. And I learned, I assume you, everybody else maybe got it clearly, but I thought the trust was actually doing the project called Brushwood, but they're not. They tried to do one on sawmill farms, which was owned by the town. And I think this gives us some that they, because the town owned the land in order to develop it for the trust, it had to be approved at town meeting. And people got up at town meeting and said, not in my backyard. And so it was that that project was, was voted down after they had um, selected Penrose mm -hmm. as the developer. And so, so there they were with Penrose and no project. So Penrose being a very diligent crowd found this piece of land, which is now called Brushwood Farm, which is also off Route 7. Mm -hmm. And that's the farm that's getting all the publicity. And um, the trust, the Lennox Trust gave them $500,000 toward, mm -hmm. uh, toward that project. And Penrose has now raised all the money wow. that they need, $36 million, to wow. do 65 units. Oh. So um, I have a picture of that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Anyway, here's the article that I think Clar Clarence, are you still on over there? Um, this is your, I'm, I'm giving publicity to your great article. Clarence's library is on at least. Clarence's library. Look, Clarence, can you hear us? Wait, oh. <laughs> He's not talking. Anyway. This is a, the, the, there are some pictures of what they're doing. Yeah. Um, and Penrose, uh, Penrose is mm -hmm. uh, a first class mm -hmm. organization, uh, but it. it's all rental. Yeah, I've seen it. Um, no, I haven't. Yeah. And finally, yesterday, not yesterday, a couple of days ago, <laughs> Friday, <laughs> um, I'm sure you've probably seen all the, um, uh, publicity because everybody loves the Martha's Vineyard camp yard, campground. Uh, Bill Cook, who used to be chair of Great Barrington's Trust, uh, cottoned on to this idea that Great Barrington would look for some land and try to use cluster housing development there. And when I heard about it, I, of course, there's a beautiful picture, I think. I apologize, my printer isn't working very well. Um, yeah, I, I read the article. Yeah. The, the article has this beautiful picture of the campground, which of course everybody saw and everybody loves. So they have had more attention to a conversation and they discussed it at their last meeting and they had so much interest that they've now launched onto a study. And the idea is not to do the campground and to do the beautiful little Victorian houses, which were originally tents and it's all it's all a religious uh, summer gathering but but the idea that i thought was perfect for us is that since we have if assuming we can go forward we have the land and if we did a leasehold uh since i personally hope we'll be able to for sale housing that if if it's done under a leasehold that the trust could maintain the land and we could do a 99 year lease with a dollar a year cost. Or get financing for those deals, though. Right. We could uh, reduce the amount of cost of the houses very substantially. Um, anyway, it's, a, it's an idea to be explored. So these are some of the things I'm trying to collect. <clears throat> um, and they, everybody knows, I think, about they're doing the habitat mm -hmm. for sale project uh, is really in Housatonic. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, um, it was very interesting conversation. I don't know. If you well, want to add. Uh, one thing I came away with, <clears throat> uh, Fred Clark was there also, who's the current chair of their affordable housing trust in GB. He was at our meeting last yeah, March. Yeah. Mm -hmm. March 16th, by the way, is the day of that. I noticed that the report yes. all right, <laughs> uh, has a blank for that, so it's March 16th. Uh, so Bill Cook and Fred Clark were there at Randy's house. And we talked for an hour and a half or so. And one of the things that they said was they'd been looking into prefab houses and they came up with a um, 1,200 square foot house installed 
or between 225,000 and 250,000. Yeah. Um, and they're I, hoping to do that. Now, I don't know if that included the water and sewer lines. No, not, but uh, that's because this is what Sally paid. You know, Sally just recently did this. You know, her house was a little bit bigger and it was a little bit more, but it was in that ballpark. Yeah. Was it prefab? Yeah. 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 So uh, it's just something to keep in mind. I mean, if you're trying to keep the houses affordable, mm -hmm. yeah, um, that's one way to do it. There's a lot of efficiency in building them. There's also just so many companies now that are designing beautiful things. I mean, they're beautiful. Some of these are stunning. Yeah. You know, it's not and the old box on the back. No, of the no. So <laughs> it's a, it's going in a positive direction, right. which yeah. is exciting. Which do you think you can show? This? Yeah. The, 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 the box of all. Yeah. I, and, and just. It's not shared though. I mean, do you want me to turn on the. Well, she's up there. Can she not? Uh, no, we don't have sharing on because people were coming in with naughty pictures. So oh. we took sharing off. But I can go and figure it out if you want. Could you, is it hard to do? I have no idea. Anyway, you're talking about <laughs> this, this video. Is that the one you're talking about? <laughs> yes, I can. Mm -hmm. here's, here's a video. Um, a friend of mine sent me this, this uh, email today and said, here's a full house. 300 square feet for $10,000. Well, it turned out, as you might suspect, that it was phony. And one of the problems, very big problems with um, the of, of the internet is that you get... <laughs> right, the sharing is on for 60 seconds. Okay. Okay. Anyway, there is a company, and it's called B-O-X-A-B-L. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There it is. There it is. There it is. There it is. Hold on, 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 Boxable wanted to prove how strong they are, so they stacked six cars on the roof. What are you going to do when someone drops a car on your house? Boxable tried to set the casita on fire. Even with this flame torch, the house didn't burn down. The company has tested for hurricane winds, water intrusion, structural strength, and much more. It's time we have better houses that are produced faster and for a lower cost. Boxable isn't just making tiny homes. They plan for a building system of customizable rooms that can stack and connect to build many different houses. Even a house that looks just like the one you live in now. Check out Boxable.com to learn more. Okay. Okay. That, okay. that wasn't... That wasn't, 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 wasn't. Like? Nope, I stopped sharing. All right. Okay. All right. The story behind this is that my friend sent me this thing that showed Elon Musk and and test somebody had gone and pasted Tesla on the front of this company's housing and said that Tesla was building for ten thousand dollars you could get Tesla with a uh, a, a, a power wall and a and a and a charger for your electric car and on and on and on. Um, well, that's that's not true, as you might expect. But Elon Musk has bought one of these box able houses. He uses it as a guest house in in one of his estate, many estates. And um, they are really. It was hard. That particular one is something from the company that actually does this. They're located in uh, Las Vegas, and they've done 400 of these prefab houses that are 300, and they are, the real number is 60,000. And for that, you get everything, and it comes, it comes, you could see them, do, you know, they were putting the walls up and down. Um, anyway, it's, it, there's a lot out there. Mm-hmm. And a lot is going on. And a there's, lot also, is there's also a company called Icon in Texas that's had a lot of press. And they've done actually some incredible, incredible affordable housing projects in outside of the United States, in South America and things like that. They use 3D printing to build homes. The challenge 
the challenge for us here would be the climate and also zoning, I'm sure, and aesthetic. But there are a lot of innovations happening inside of this where prefab doesn't necessarily have a negative connotation like it might have before because they're doing a lot with design, which is nice. Right. And there was another company that I found once I started in on this. Oh, it's a hole. This morning. You go down a rabbit hole. With you, I was down a rabbit hole and I had like 10 minutes left. So a lot more research, but the, but the, but this box of box of all, whatever it is, has a very good looking uh, product mm -hmm. that you can put a lot of different finishes on the exterior. And, um, you know, it's, it's, what happens is that I think you get 300 feet for, which is one bedroom and common areas and kitchen and, and one bathroom mm -hmm. for $60,000. And if you multiply that out, you know, you're up to 100, 250,000. Mm -hmm. If we could figure out how to build something here for $250,000, um, now that we have the land, but we don't have the utilities, I don't think. So our, it's going to take a lot to get the utilities up, uh, up, up, up the, uh, up the hill. Anyway, I just thought you might be interested in various little things. Mm -hmm. keep dribbling this this meeting is all virtual. It's just so you know. Oh, thank you. The meeting okay. with Shelly tomorrow. All right. Well, so how do we get, how do we get the zoom stuff? Just click on this. Let's just go to that link. Go to this link, go to mhp.net okay. and it's under events. And Lenore and Jackie have their hands up. Today. Oh, sorry, Jackie. Yeah. Um, this is kind of slightly off topic, and you'll. Be able Why to not? Edit. Right. <laughs> My understanding of the donation was that it could be used for affordable housing or open space. There's been no determination if affordable housing is feasible on this site right. yet. And I know the trust is working really hard to generate affordable housing or animal. Is anyone in the town looking at the possibility of the property being used for open as an open space resource for the community? And I know, you know, I've been sitting in your meetings, I know you're doing so much work on this, yeah. but in the event that the results uh, are that, you know, housing is not uh, feasible on this site, uh, who who will be looking at who looks like that. using this right. as an open space resource? Is anyone currently doing that? No, and it won't be, Jackie, until um, the the way the gift the gift is for affordable housing, and the plan is that if it doesn't, it it, it can't be developed for affordable housing. There's an option to ask the town if they would like to accept it, and if they did, Patrick, it, it would have to go to town meeting. Right. Has to be done. That's my understanding. Yeah. Whether or not once, you know, um, we also have that after we accept the gift, if we, if a certain number of years goes by and we're not able to build housing on it, I believe it just becomes open space. Right? And I don't recall what it is. It goes, no, it goes back to Hans. Yeah. It, it, one of the options is it goes back to Hans. Yeah. And um, it, I think it's uh, five years. If, if, if we don't do anything for five years. Jack, do you think, when you think of open space, do you think of it as just being as it is now or that people would have access to it? From my viewpoint, it would be a community resource. You know, it trails as wetlands, okay. wildlife. So we would have questions of- I'm hopeful yeah. that we don't know what's gonna happen in the future, but that is a sensitive matter, uh, open space, to make whatever's developed <laughs> more, you know, a better quality to outcome. preserve that. Yeah. So, um, you know, I just want, I just wanted to know if anybody was working on it. I read the article as well about the $250,000 homes. I, I noticed that one of the things they did was to reduce the fenestration on uh, those buildings, I believe, in order to reduce the cost, which um, you know, they, they, they tried to really walk away from it being a tiny house per se. Uh, but there is a lot of interest all over mm -hmm. uh, with respect to how we as a you know, country can provide that affordable housing. It's a global issue. And certainly, mm -hmm. something we're all mm -hmm. fighting. That number of 250 seems to be a, a conversation yeah. number, um, whether it has any reality to it and what it includes. My interest in, in the whole Great Barrington uh, 
Martha's Vineyard idea is is the financing structure that would help to reduce the cost. If we if uh, for them for Great Barrington people they have to go out and buy land, and so they're trying to figure out how they can fund mm -hmm. purchasing land, and more importantly, how they can use their land more efficiently as cluster housing. So I and I don't know. I don't, do you do you have any idea? on cluster housing, uh, what their laws are. What their what? Yeah, uh, their is it allowed? Are. Is it is cluster housing allowed in Great Barrington? Do you it's know? It's allowed in, in Stockbridge. I mean, we've got a cluster housing bylaw on the books now. You know, uh, I think that, I think that uh, I, I have no idea what their zoning is. Um, it, it, there tends to be a, you know, there's different zones and, you know, you can do more density in downtown area. And as you go out, you know, it, it's less dense, but, uh, yeah, I don't know if there's, there's, every town is different with special permits than the rest of it. Right. Yeah. But um, anyway, that's that's what they're doing. And I think and it's just interesting. Or, sorry? Lenore on Zoom. On Zoom. Oh. oh, Lenore, yes. Hello. Yeah, I, I actually, I don't know Jackie, but I think she mentioned something regarding tiny houses. And I didn't I mean, there is a tiny house company, or at least there used to be in North Adams. Yes. And, um, you know, is and I don't, cluster? and cluster housing with tiny houses is, you know, something that one could consider, but, you know, it has, it obviously, um, that doesn't work for a family. Uh, so, you know, that's right. But anyway, no. that is an option for a lower cost housing. In right. addition to what you were talking about, which is also super interesting are the, you know, the ones that are a prefab structures that are more affordable. Mm -hmm. So anyway, yeah. I, I found this, I just wanted to say the meeting was extremely interesting and thank you for all your work. Thank you. Oh, well, thank Thanks. you. Thank you for coming and please come back. I we really, we appreciate, uh, you know, your attendance. And, and I will say this, I just want to say like the, the idea of tiny house, I think is also, a, a definition that keeps changing. And I just want to say, like, I personally live in a thousand square feet and I have two kids and I think it's great. And I, I'm also not like, I don't collect a lot of stuff. I don't, I don't have a lot of things, but I also think like generationally, there's a lot of people who are in my age bracket who are living like this. They don't want these huge houses. They don't want to pay the electric bills for them. They don't, they want passive things. They want smaller things that are manageable and minimal. And so I, I think there's a lot of potential here that we could do something small and not necessarily associate it with like these miniature itty bitty 250 square feet that are still livable. For yeah, our, our family of five grew up in 1300 square feet here in Stockbridge. Right. So our, our, our square foot per person was lower back then than you <laughs> <laughs> okay. I feel for you. <laughs> the, the, the number of people that I know that live in Manhattan. Yeah, exactly. In five, in five and 600 square foot condominiums. Yeah. yeah, for which they pay an outrageous amount of money is, <laughs> yeah. is not insignificant. True. And so the concept of tiny houses is only a little bit smaller than that, and they get a lot more functionality out of it. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Lost spaces and count. Yes. Anyway, it's a it's an absolutely important, critical national conversation mm. that's going on. And tiny house does have a definition, I think, of right. 300 feet or less. Like, and it, I, I can't imagine that that's not the t market we're hoping to. No, no. I think they range from like 300 right. to 800. I think it's like three or 400 is the maximum of a tiny house. But, you know, you can do like small houses, yeah. studio apartments, whatever. Is there one that really for a motion? Yes. You yes. want to adjourn, sir? Yes. He yes. would like to adjourn. <laughs> like to Can adjourn. You tap? All right. Wait, 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 wait. Next. What about a next meeting date? Oh. Oops. Thank you. Well, we got a lot. All right. Or the twenty eighth. We're doing well, our twenty eighth. But do we need to meet before the twenty eighth? Uh, Madam, you're in charge of that. No, I don't think so. I don't think. Has anybody so. got as anything? As long as people will send me their Everyone's comments second. and suggestions. Hold, hold on. We're, we're getting a meeting. Oh. We, well, isn't it the 28th? Did we decide that? Well, we're trying to figure out if we have to meet before then, if there's anything we have. No, I don't think I so. Think I don't think Jan so. is on top and Jan and Michaela are on top of this. As yes. long as you send uh, Karen and me comments back yeah. on that presentation. I'll look at it. Okay. 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 Do try to go tomorrow if you can possibly do it from photo one. 
Good. Thank you. Terrific. Meeting adjourned. Thank you all. Thank Come you. Again. Make, a motion. make a motion. Somebody make a motion. Who said that? Second. Okay. Everybody's in favor. It's over. <laughs>